Hello everyone and welcome to It Goes Off. Round 24 has come and gone and we have our final four teams for this year's playoffs, Grantley Bernard. And although we don't know the end result of the placings, we do know that New Zealand Breakers are going to finish on top and the Perth Wildcats are going to finish second. And it's just going to come down to this round 25 action about whether the Blaze finish third or fourth or the Crocs finish third or fourth. That's uh, as simple as you can make it. It is as simple as that. And uh, ironically, these two, these teams, these series of games that we see in round 25 could re be replicated. They could. In the first round of the playoffs. They could. It could, after playing last weekend, uh, the Crocs could be going back to Perth and the Blaze could be, uh, be going to New Zealand if you're the Crocs coming off that... Um father of hiding over in Perth, he might be a little worried about going back there again so quickly. Well, we're going to touch on that because the Crocs, uh, they were insipid against the Perth Wildcats. The P Wildcats were able to rack up 101 points and they, uh, they really had their way with the Townsville Crocs. The Perth Wildcats are great at home, as are the New Zealand Breakers, but that home court, watching it last Friday night, a sea of red out there, the Perth Wildcats look like they've gone up a gear as they head in towards the playoff. They, they may well have, and that's kind of what you come to expect of the Wildcats. But I would just say that how many times have we thought this season that the Wildcats were just mm. stepping up a gear, and then all of a sudden they didn't quite get it into, mm. into third. So it'll be interesting to see whether they're really there or whether they've still got a little work to do. Well, Grantley, I'm going to throw it to you again. And uh, a lot of people, when I was out and about at NBL games, could not understand in any way, shape or form your explanation of how the playoffs were going to pan out last week. So we're going to give you another crack at it. Well, I, I, didn't I say that, that Gold Coast and Townsville were going to get in? Yes, you did. Well, there you go. Just, That's all you need to know. That is true. Ultimately, you got there, but it was a bit convoluted. And let's just see now if you could perhaps talk us through where you think the third and fourth placings are going to fall. Well, they're going to fall in either third or fourth, I would have thought. Well, I'm more along the lines of what teams are going uh -huh. to occupy third or fourth. Well, it'll be the Blaze or the, or the Crocs. Exactly. Now, in which order do you think that that would end up? Okay. The Blaze are 16 and 11, and the Crocs are 15, 12. Right. So, both teams mm -hmm. actually are home to the New Zealand Breakers. Mm. So, level playing field there. If the Blaze wins... Blazers third, pure and simple. Right. If the Crocs lose, mm. the Blaze finish third. Mm -hmm. No questions asked, mm -hmm. even if the Blaze lose. Yep. But if the Blaze lose and the Crocs win, <laughs> well, then the Crocs finish third. Right. Can it be any simpler than that? As even for you. Clear as mud. It's not, it's not hard. No, it is pretty straightforward. Uh, but uh, just perhaps the way you describe it, it just might confuse a few people out there. In other words, check the website to get a full and comprehensive view of how it all might turn out. But Grantly, what we do have is we do know with Perth and New Zealand finishing in second and first placing, we do know where the game one of the semi-final series is going to take place, don't we? We do. Where would that be? It's going to be in New Zealand on March 30, followed by Game 1 of the Perth series in Perth on April 1st. And make sure you check the website. St Andrew's Day. <laughs> April Fool's Day. Beautiful. Check the uh, website to make sure that uh, after this Round 25 is completed, where those games are going to be played. And get out there as soon as you know. Jump on the website and purchase some tickets because they're going to be hot items and an exciting playoff series uh, about to unfold. Grantley, last week we lost one of the all-time greats of the co competition. We're about to lose one of the all-time greats of the competition. Can, Not can just, because he's going to pass away. I was going to say, he's only, just, he's only retiring. He, he, we, he's only retiring. We are losing him <laughs> to the game uh, and to the Ironet NBL. And I speak of Matt Campbell, who's been in the competition for 17 years. And not only has he been in the competition for 17 years, he's been with one club the entire time. So we pay great respect to Matt Campbell and what he's done both on and off the floor because we cast our mind back to a couple of seasons ago. The Wollongong Hawks were done and dusted. And he was the one that was pounding the pavement, rattling the tins and putting together a management and an ownership structure in for them to continue in the NBL. So he has uh, been an extraordinary performer, but one that uh, not only the Wollongong fans, but fans right throughout the country uh, pay respect to. 
Uh, indeed they do. It's his last uh, game on Sunday. They play Adelaide. It will be his 524th NBL game. That will put him at 7th place mm. uh, on the uh, games list for the NBL. 17 seasons uh, in the NBL, which is... Mm-hmm. That, that's going back. He would have come in when you were about 35. <laughs> Correct. So he came, came in uh, late in, in your career. And uh, as you say, he, he, he is the sort of guy... Yes. His career was probably not defined by stats or numbers. Consummate team man. Uh, always made his teammates better. Team first all the way. Won a championship back in, in 2001. So yeah. we're, 11 years ago, it's, it's uh, kind of gone pretty quickly, that, that decade. But the Hawks got the job done. There was, there was him and uh, obviously Glenn Savile were the two linchpins of that team, the two mainstays. And, and that was... Um, a fitting reward for those guys. Yeah, spot on, Grantley. And uh, let's just hope the Wollongong Hawks fans get out there on Sunday afternoon, I believe it is, and uh, pay respect to a great man that's done fantastic things for the for the sport, but also particularly in that Wollongong area. He is a absolute icon. Someone else we need to pay respect for to, and two people in in particular. And this one may be a little bit harder for the fans to really embrace, but we've got two officials that are going to be calling their last games, and they are Ray Hunt and Roger Shields. They've been around as long as I can remember. I cannot remember basketball without Roger Shields and Ray Hunt. And this goes back to when I was a little uh, floor wiper. So they have been around there a long, long time, and they've now uh, called it a day. And they have been fantastic servants of the game. Uh, they sure have. And um, of significance is that, that Ray Hunt will actually break the NBL record for most games refereed. He will take over from Billy Milton Hall, his, his mate and running mm. partner. Um, he will do his 946th wow. game uh, when the Tigers and the Wildcats play at the cage. Roger Shields will uh, do his 714th game. It'll be the Kings and the Hawks. So in essence, they've both got home games to finish off. Yep. Um, so so between them, uh, they've got like uh, what sixteen hundred and fifty nine games between them. Brilliant maths on the. Fly. And we're still waiting for their first good one. Terrific stuff by you, Grantley. <laughs> that is unfair <laughs> at this particular time. They have been sensational. Uh, but that's enough about the refs. It's now time for a little section we call, who's hot, who's not. And as per usual, at his request, Grantley's going to tackle some of the lesser performances in the competition. But I'm going to start with the New Zealand Breakers' home record. They are 13-1 and this season, which is just uh, great going by them and makes them a real tough proposition for the playoffs with such a, a magnificent home court advantage. And they're going to have that right throughout the playoffs in both the semi-final and the grand final series if they get there. So that uh, is going to make them a handful. It's going to be a big edge. A, a huge edge. And they're moving to the, the Vector Arena, yeah. the biggest stadium. So the challenge for opposition teams is only going to get better. So well done to the New Zealand Breakers. And while we're talking about hot, we cannot I- ignore the two premier teams in the competition right now. And the, in, the other one is the Perth Wildcats. They had 101 points uh, against the Townsville Crocs. And uh, they did that, did that with only committing five Turnovers. Now, a lot of the times you can look at that and say, you, you, you put the explanation of that on the Crocs, but the Perth Wildcats just playing some fantastic basketball. They've got the emotion of the fans there. They are, again, going to be very, very hot and uh, playing some playing seemingly their best basketball at the right time of the season. And lastly, we may, may mention to, of it uh, just before, but Matt Campbell, we cannot emphasise this point enough. Congratulations to Matty Campbell on his retirement and 17 wonderful seasons in the NBL. Now, he's ready to go. He's got the fire in the belly, and he's ready to pump it out and just destroy the hopes of someone. Who are you going to lay him into this week, Grant Lee Bernard? The Not Hots. <laughs> Please. We'll start with the Crocs. Just 23 points in the second half against the Wildcats. That's not enough. 23. That's not 23. enough. Good no, defense no, no, no. by the Wildcats. Oh, fantastic. The Cairns Taipans. Yes. Had a great chance to go to mm. the playoffs, and they lost three straight. Mm. So that's not playoff form, not going to the playoffs. No. And finally... Yes. He can't mention him. 
Who, we've got the Tigers. He refuses to speak about the Tigers. And after their game last Sunday, I can understand why. Because they were putrid. They lost to the Sixers and Hawks in back-to-back home games. So that's what you wanted to say? Fair enough. A uh, Grantly, terrific work by you. And uh, we're getting to the end of the season. And we're running out of competitors in the 24-second shot challenge. But... Stand by, and Darren Ning, hopefully you're watching because uh, we have someone we believe is snapping at the heels of the great Darren Ning. He talked it up on Twitter. He spoke a big game. We haven't seen the footage yet. We're going to sit back, relax, and have a look at the work of the New Zealand breakers, Daryl Coletto, and see how he does in the 24-second shot challenge. All right, I'm Dylan Batch from the Sky City Breakers, and today on It Goes Off, we've got Darren Coletto. Are you going to... Daryl Corletta. Come on, Mika. <laughs> Daryl Corletta. Um, he's one of the new recruits on the team, um, the sharpshooter, the hot guy, as we call him. Um, no reference to the way he looks, but uh, he's going to be having the, the challenge today, the free throw challenge, and uh, we've all got money on him that he can knock uh, Darren Ng off the top of the charts. What do you think? Uh, well, it's all to do with the rebounding deal, so I think you've, uh, you've got 36-year-old legs, so I might need you to pick it up a little bit and chase down those loose balls. I'm not actually going to do the rebounding. I'm just holding the mic, mate. I think we've got our number one rebounder over here, Cedric Jackson, who's going to be doing the rebounding. And, uh, you know, he's lightning quick, so he can probably get them back to you as quick as you can shoot them. Okay, well, let's do it. Let's see how we go. Let's get this going. Too early, that's what happened. You rushed them. You're gonna have to do it again and cheat like every other team does. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, well done. Thanks, mate. Appreciate it. Was, uh, was, it was a good attempt. I actually thought you got more than 15, but. No, no. I got about 14, but I choked at the end. Well, sometimes that happens as long as you bring it to playoff time and we're all good. We'll be ready. Oh. 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 <laughs> White man, well, you just don't know what you're doing. I have no idea. <laughs> Well, there you have it, uh, Daryl Coletto in an impressive display, and it just goes to show what happens if you get some good passes, some good feeds, and you've got a very quick release because he got 20 shots up, 15 of 20, mm. Grantly. That just goes to show Darren Ning, we thought that he would be able to maintain his world record for a long, long time. Daryl Coletto, at the very least, has demonstrated it is beatable. It was. The doctor might have been a little nervous. Very nervous. But what about Boucher? Yeah. What about Boucher? Oh, we'll have to cheat like the other teams. Cheating. Let's just rewind the clock. <laughs> Please. And we'll just Last say two minute. words. Gary, Gary Wilkinson. Wilkinson. Unbelievable. And if anything... Kirk Penny with his little comedy oh. attempt last year too. That could almost fall in. And I mean, let's, let's call a spade a spade. A Corletto spade. took the gas down the stretch. <laughs> Choked. Had it. Missed his last oh. three, hope two. That doesn't, hope, Unbelievable. Hope that's not a sign for the breakers in the playoffs. Oh, I, I tell you what, I do respect the, the quick release. It was it very impressive. Very good stuff. I reckon if we gave him a few goes at it, Darren Ning's uh, title, but you don't get a few goes at it. No, you just get one. You put up and Unless that's you're it. Gary Wilkinson. Unless, that's correct. <laughs> <laughs> Next year, maybe, for Daryl Collado, because he yeah. signed a two-year deal. Yep. Uh, it's now time of the show where we get your feedback. We want you to just attack us on the uh, social media, either via the NBL uh, Facebook page, which is uh, the most common way that people that can get in contact with us, or if you want to hit us directly, hit us on the Twitter. Andrew Gage 10, Grantley Bernard. What, you got dozen, 15 type followers, so you'll get plenty of... Need. I go, of response I, go, I go for quality over quantity. <laughs> That's right. Well, it's a little segment we call the Mark Zuckerberg Minute. And uh, this week, we, uh, as we have every week, we've got a official sporting game ball on offer for the best question. Now, there's been a little bit of uh, angry feedback. You've just damaged it. A little bit of angry feedback about the quality of the question which you are giving the prize to. So... 
I think this week I am actually going to give it out just because you've been, um, well, just to paraphrase what some of the people have come back with, you've been rubbish. Okay, so first question up, we've got Sean Pillar. What's he got for us, Grantley? Sean Pillar says, I think the obvious question here is, who wins the MVP and why? That is a tough one. This has been... It's topical. It's the one of the... Awards night Monday. It is the awards night coming up, and uh, it's one of the more closely fought MVPs that I can recall in the history of the NBL. There's really been no one that, or, or, or not even one or two that you sort of say, that's definitely one of these two. It is that wide open. Who have you got, Grantly, as some of your suggestions? I, I agree with you. There's no standout candidate. No. Um, but I think just casting yes. an eye, I like Cedric Jackson from the New Zealand Breakers. I think he's been consistent. Mm. He's been a consistently high performer in a winning team. I think he's a good chance. Mm. I also like Jamal Wilson. Yes. From uh, the Taipans. He's up there for sure. And maybe Mark Worthington. Oh, I, 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 a little bit of a slow start. Yeah. A very good middle bit. I had a little bit of a hiccup th- a couple of weeks ago, but I think came he back could be around the mark. And Cam Dragar will have picked up a lot of votes in the first half of the season. I think he could be a shot. And if I'm. I don't even think he might be a smoky, but I reckon Daniel Johnson from the Adelaide 36ers is going to be around the mark. You stole my thunder, Grantley. I think he is a smoky. I don't think he will win it. But given that he, there's not a lot of people that I think in the Adelaide team would be taking too many votes away from him. But uh, it's um, it's another one. The other, the last one I throw out there because he's probably going to end the season as the leading scorer, and the Perth Wildcats are currently in second place. The other one is Kevin Lish. I think that he started the season on fire and his shooting percentages and the way he's led that team, you can't, uh, you can't ignore him as you, well either. You've got a man crush on, on Kevin Lish, haven't you? I don't have a man crush, but I have respect for the great man and the work that he's been doing uh, and doing it on a consistent basis in big games. He steps up to the plate in big games. Another one, uh, Grantley Bernard, who, we've got... Uh, who's up next? Nat, where you at? That's why I wasn't sure whether that now, was his name. I'm not sure if that's his, his real name. That's, that's, his, that's his... Hey... That's his handle. Oh. That's the terminology they use, the oh, kids out there, okay. the youngsters. Yep, yep, yep. Handle. Uh, do either of us believe that the season MVP should only be given to a player on a winning team? Uh, very good question. And uh, when you think of it, I don't think it really matters where your team comes because it is an, an individual award. And we saw last season, although he came in second place, only lost by one vote was Julian Kazoo. And uh, his team never did all that well. And, of course, Gary Irvin with the Wollongong Hawks uh, he got the nod, Grantley. He, he did. Gary Evan did win the uh, didn't win the MVP, and the Hawks didn't go to the playoffs. But he was able to pick up enough votes along the way and uh, and pick up the MVP. Usually, though, if you look back in history, and I'm I'm guessing a little bit here. Usually, though, the MVP is coming from a team that, at the very least, is is, is seeing playoff action. Uh, that would be a fair mm. uh, a fair guess. Fair guess. Mm. Hey, uh, some couple of very good questions there, and uh, because I am making the choice today, Sean Pillar is going to be the one that takes home the Spalding ball, uh, primarily because Nat, where you at? I'm just not sure where to deliver that ball to. We, we don't know how to get. <laughs> We're not sure where Nat at. We don't know where Nat's at. If we knew where Nat was at, then they'd be in contention. Nat, not here. Here, no Nat. Hey, uh, Grantley. We are down to the very last round of the Ironet NBL season. So, for the last time in the 2011-12 season, can you please tell the good folk out there where they can go and see some very, very high-quality Ironet NBL action? We sure can. It's the weekend that is the playoff tune-up for some, and it is the mothballs for others. Starts on Friday night with three games. The Melbourne Tigers at home to the Perth Wildcats. The Cairns Taipans are hosting the Adelaide 36ers. And in a true playoff warm-up and to determine third place, the Townsville Crocodiles are at home to the New Zealand Breakers. Mm. On Saturday, the Kings and the Hawks in the highly emotional Roger Shields farewell game. (laughs) And on Sunday... It's the Wollongong Hawks and the Adelaide 36ers in the actual 
<laughs> big time farewell for Matty Soup Campbell. That is going to be, that would be a day to remember if you can get along to the Wongong Entertainment mm. Centre. Mm. And on Sunday night, the Gold Coast Blaze also shooting for third spot against the New Zealand Breakers. Grantly, some really important games to finish off the season and uh, none more important than those third and fourth placings there. So uh, get along and try and support your team. And please do not forget about the MVP Awards Night coming up on Monday night. Grantly Bernard, not only will you be there, you'll be hosting the live streaming action. So there'll be dozens of people out there that are going to get to see and watch you. <laughs> the but audience will be in the tens. <laughs> there will be dozens. So uh, you'll be there. You can check him out online or you can go along and purchase some tickets. Now, tickets are almost sold out. They... The, they go offline on Thursday, so make sure you jump on the website. You can jump on the NBL website or you can go to basketball.net.au forward slash MVP to purchase some tickets. It's uh, Monday night. It's at the beautiful Crown Casino in the very, very spectacular uh, Palladium Room and entertainment galore. MVP announcement for the NBL or WNBL, All-Star Fives, International Players of the Year, all the top basketball players are going to be there, and uh, Grantley will be live streaming. Also, last year, Guy Sebastian made a, 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 a appearance there, and Grantley, the only way to describe it, rocked the house. This year, we are going again. I believe he's a little bit funky, and he's going he's, in a different direction. He's funky, he's soulful, and he goes by the name of Tim O'Matic. Tim O'Matic's going to be rocking the house. So he's like, he's not doing Irish folk songs. No folk songs here. Tim O'Matic. Tim O'Matic. Now, some of his work... If not he, Finnegan's Wake and... No, no, that's not the one. But uh, he's plagiarised us a little bit because his hit song uh, this year was called Set It Off. Now, he is going to be setting off and going off on Monday. So uh, all the fans out there of uh, Tim O'Matic, get along to this show because it's going to be fantastic. Grantley, let's pay some respect for those that uh, look after us here at It Goes Off and also support this great game of ours called basketball. And it all starts with the naming rights sponsor of the NBL, and that is, of course, iNet. Connect better. One. Send a bet. And one. Sporting. Fido. Woof. 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 <laughs> and, and Virgin Australia. Correct. Virgin Australia doing a terrific job. And they'll be flying all the players into Melbourne on Monday night to see Tim O'Matic. Grantly, finals are upon us. Next week, we will break down the first round of the uh, playoffs, better known as the semi-final series, and uh, best of three series starting the following week. So make sure you come back and check it out then. Check out Grantly on Monday night, streaming live throughout the entire world. And uh, let's hope that you can... Enjoy that and come back next week and check us out on the number one podcast of the Ironet NBL in the universe. It's called, you know the drill, it goes off. Oh.